What's up everyone, Lion Roar here, and in today's video I'm gonna do a full breakdown and testing of our latest Bloodcraft champion, which is Heaven Sage, aka Gokong. But first, download Bloodline Heroes of Lithus, a mobile RPG action fighting game where you can marry your champions to create new and unique hybrids. Use the link in the description to start with some free stuff, including golden diamonds. See you hopefully soon. Alright, so apologies for the delay in getting this Heaven Sage video out there. I did have oral surgery a couple of weeks ago, so I wasn't able to talk on the day of his release. Uh, so it just took me a little while to get around to this. But I do want to take a detailed look at Gokong right now. Uh, he is a mix of the Dawnbreakers clan and of Siyun. And Siyun is a, a relatively recent clan as well. You can really tell there he looks like the male Siyun. Uh, quite a lot there with like the Dawnbreakers gear. I think this is a really, really cool looking hero. Um, and I think his abilities are cool too. In fact, I think this is probably one of our better Bloodcraft champions we've gotten so far. Um, although there's still uh, a number of regular champions that are still going to be better than him, as is the case with most Bloodcraft champions. They just really seem to specialize in certain things. So let's take a look at what it is that he is specializing in. So, you know, do note, I've leveled uh, these traits up somewhat just for the testing today, but these numbers are gonna be higher depending on how high you can get the level. The passive is the first thing that affects the battlefield, so that's what I'm gonna look at first. The casters and clones normal attack and active skill can both inflict an eight second stack that cannot be dispelled. With four stacks, the target will be silenced and take 27.5% more damage for five seconds. And that could be really, really good uh, against bosses in particular. The casters or clones normal attacks during the five seconds will deal an additional damage equal to eight and a half percent of the target's max constitution. Again, really good for bosses up to 2000% of the caster's strength. Um, so uh, usually when we see abilities like that, we're talking PVE um, uh, potential here. The silenced effect can be dispelled, but the damage increase cannot. Uh, all right, so then next uh, usually goes the active skill within a battle. Um, and of course, sometimes there's uh, particular events and things like that where you don't even get to use the ultimate. So keep that in mind. The active skill is really important. Shines a light on a random enemy champion and inflicts stunned for four seconds. Always love to see control. The caster then immediately teleports behind the target and launches AOE attacks. So area of effect damaging not only the target, but also those around it, uh, meaning you want to bunch them together if you can. Dealing damage equal to 814.3% of the caster's strength. When stun ends, the caster deals additional damage equal to 38.6% of the target's damage taken when stun. When the skill is repeatedly cast on the same target, the stun duration doesn't stack, but the additional damage does. There's just the potential for a lot, a lot of damage here. And this is going to play better in longer matches. So once again, better probably for PvE but could be really interesting in PvP too. We'll just have to see. All right, the ultimate creates one clone near the weakest enemy champion. I like to see that, by the way. Pick on the weak one. The clone exists for about eight seconds, inheriting the caster's base stats, casting the same active skill, and taking 40% less damage. While it exists, the clone will take all damage dealt to the caster, and the caster becomes immune to control effects and gains 30% lifesteal. This existing clone dies immediately if the ultimate skill is cast again. So obviously they don't want multiples of these clones floating around on the battlefield. Um, okay, well, uh, this is certainly an interesting Bloodcraft champion here. And I think uh, could probably be good in both PvE and PvP. What I'm thinking here in PvP is you definitely want to build a team around trying to, to lump or group opponents together in the same spot on the battlefield uh, for that sweet, sweet AOE effect. Um, and then in PvE, you basically just throw him in there and let him do his thing, and he's going to deal a ton of damage. You almost don't even need to build around him in PvE. Uh, he's just already built to take down those big bosses. But let's take a look at the traits, and I'm still a little undecided on what I want to do with this, and I'm going to explain the situation here. I'm still undecided if he really is going to be top tier in PvP. I don't think so, but I think he's going to be very useful. So I'm probably going to stick with what I have here. 
but he definitely is an all-star for PvE. So uh, the mix of both, using him in both scenarios, I went with Agile for the increased attack, which is really good with that active skill uh, and the passive, to be honest. Um, and honestly, it's just a great trait. Uh, then we have Brutal because of the strength cap that does exist on the amount of damage being done to an opponent based on their constitution uh, to get that up there as much as we possibly can. Um, and then also um, Pure Heart. And this is a trait that is only for PvP. So if I decide that I'm not going to play him in PvP anymore, I'm taking this trait out and I'm putting something else in there. Um, there's a bunch of things that could go in that slot uh, other than Pure Heart that could be really good. But the reason I'm going with Pure Heart is because not only do we have Balko in the meta, and especially in my meta um, where I'm facing a lot of top players, uh, but there's a lot of statuses that you do just need to get rid of anyway. So Pure Heart can be very, very useful in that case. Um, in this day and age, you know what? Fierce is like another trait that is just better than... And it didn't used to be this way, but it's better than so many of the clan traits that are out there. Uh, so you could potentially put Fierce on here if you're trying to get more damage out of it. If you're just trying to keep him alive more, which doesn't really seem to be his role. But I mean, you could consider Honorable or maybe even Energetic. But I, I just think um, uh, some of these basic traits for that last slot are the best thing that, that's going on here. But why don't we jump into the arena and just see how he does. First, I'm going to start off with a pretty evenly matched team here. They have a little bit more power, but basically the essence of this team here, and I'm going to slow it down a little bit so you can see, is the female Tide Razor is going to pull the opponents in and clump them together uh, so that the area of effect, the active skills and ultimates of my team are basically just draining everybody at the same time. You can see that initial burst of damage that came from the active skills. And then right at the end here, all the uh, area of effect ultimates are going off and hopefully gonna drain the last bit of life out of uh, my opponents here. And it looks like we were able to do it. That's awesome. Okay, so let's look at the stats and see uh, what did Heaven Sage do here? Um, it was actually, as usual, the um, male Alma and the male Ho who are doing the most amount of damage. And those two tend to trade off on who does the most damage. Um, I actually expected Heaven Sage to do a bit more damage here. Now the reason, and it's not bad damage, like actually Mel Cigaric is another PVE type of really awesome champion who's good in PVP as well. And you can see they're nearly identical here as far as the amount of damage done. So um, what that's telling me in just one match is He's very good in PvP, but he's probably not top tier in PvP. He certainly works in a team like this. Now I'm going to turn the heat up a bit and go against a team that is more than 30 million more powerful than my team. And they have all meta heroes. So I doubt I'm going to win this, but I want to see how our Heaven Sage does in a match like this. And uh, because they have no water and sun and I don't, uh, I can't really regain the HP that I'm losing here. Um, so it is a race against the clock to see if my active skills and ultimates can take them down, which it looks like they weren't able to do that before their male water and sun was uh, able to go off. Uh, and now Heaven Sage is done. Male Alma was the last one standing, but let's at least see how uh, he did. And that's atrocious. That's not good. Going up against a meta team, you want to see... Uh, a Bloodcraft champion doing a lot more damage than this, especially when damage is his specialty. Um, but it looks like just the regular heroes, not the Bloodcraft champions, uh, were the, the best ones going up against here. And I would much rather have a piece than this PvP team that was able to get me over the edge. Probably male Water and Sun, to be honest, but maybe some other type of healing. So now let's see how he does alongside meta heroes. This is my top team and I'm going against another top team uh, similar in power level although you can see that right off the bat I did almost enough damage to wipe out their whole team however he is coming back now that his male water and some went online um, my heaven sage is gone already uh, now he does have much 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 less vigor than my team here but I'm hoping he could at least contribute a little bit to this match and um, barely anything my spider died uh, real early, but my Heaven Sage did nothing. Last up, I'm going to go against my friendly nemesis, a fierce daughter, uh, who uh, we just go back and forth. Uh, we are so close in our teams. I think she has a better team than I do right now, but especially with Heaven Sage, I don't think this is going to go well. He, he just really seems to be taking the place of a much better 
champion that I could be running and just look how my team is getting wiped out and like Heaven Sage didn't even stand a chance. Now it could be because I'm playing with him instead of female Ho who, who does seem to help the whole team with survivability. Um, I, oh my gosh, this is, gonna be, this is what I'm talking about. This is so close. Um, but if I win, and oh my gosh, I can't believe I won. That had nothing to do with Heaven Sage. Just <laughs> literal nothing. Did zero damage. I mean, just would rather have not have him on the team. Okay, last one against Fierce Daughter because I wanted to put female Ho back in just to see if the survivability would help him at all. I don't think it is. I think it's just going to mean I have two heroes now who are not really dealing damage. Um, so now it could be my three heroes versus their five. Um, yeah, I that was not better. Um, that was not better. In PvP, it, it's looking like um, Heaven Sage can be a good like third team type of champion but absolutely not top tier once again he did zero in pvp at the highest tier all right in valley of conquerors i went back with my synergy team because although it wasn't great it was better and it just seems like you know against these meta teams unfortunately heaven sage is not able to compete I mean, he, he should have been one of my stronger heroes in this particular matchup. And he was gone early and just, again, whew, didn't do anything in the Valley of Conquerors. And this, this wasn't like an overpowered team I was facing off against. They have maybe 30 million more power or so uh, than my team here. But he should have done a lot more than that. And that's enough of that. So <laughs> I went ahead and replaced Pure Heart with Fierce now because although he can be good in PvP on teams where you build around him like we saw in the clumping strategy with female Tide Razor, um, he's just not good enough to be on a top tier team. And not only that, but even on the clumping team, uh, I think I just have better options that are more flexible. I'd rather put my resources into for that. So I think he's gonna primarily be a PvE type of hero in which I wanna get as much damage out of him as possible. Let's see how he does with these traits against the bosses. Now this is my top PvE team and just watch the boss melt away here. And I do have it on X2 speed, otherwise it would just take way too long. Uh, but we can see uh, our Heaven Sage and his clone going to work and look at the red bar at the top of our opponent. Just like, I, I feel like a lot of times in this game you barely see that move, especially on these bosses, but you can just see the HP melting away there. And not only that, there's so many control effects. Like, remember, he's got the stun going on. He's got two, uh, he's got himself and the clone working on uh, uh, the raid boss here, which means the raid boss is basically just never able to do anything. Just frozen there while I beat away at him. <laughs> And this is going to be an enormous amount of damage. Let's speed this up a little bit uh, so we can see what the outcome is here. And look at that. We took more than half of the boss's HP away and it was Heaven Sage. It was Heaven Sage. I mean, as soon as I plugged him into my raid boss teams, uh, this, this was the outcome. I mean... All these other heroes I had here were by far dealing the most damage on my roster to the raid boss. And then he just comes in and out does everybody, including my level 120 vigor male water and sun here. And, and Heaven Sage is nowhere close to him. So he is a PvE all-star. It's pretty clear here. Um, and uh, so see, I just finished off a whole boss, which <laughs> basically with just him. So uh, he is a PvE all-star. And uh, but, you know good for pvp you could here's the thing i think what makes him valuable is you can absolutely play him in pvp and especially if you're a newer player or sort of like mid-tier type of player this is absolutely a hero you can get and just annihilate bosses and also play with him in wars and things like that um so he is very useful although i in my tier the highest tiers of play against some of the toughest opponents am not going to be bringing him along in pvp i have some better options those are just my thoughts on him, but let me know what you think in the comments. If you enjoy videos like this, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification, and I will catch you in the next one.